Morning. Happy New Year if you missed the last one. Uh, yeah, rolled into another one, 2024. So, anyway, uh, Miranda's on her way. I've just got a text message for, from her. So, um, we're going to do the sample cut on the rice this morning and try not to blow the microwave, a microwave up. <laughs> so, we'll just dry it down and, and yeah, we'll explain what's going on with it. Uh, the, well, Brendan's back on deck this morning. Not too sure where what Tony's up to. I haven't been talking to him, but um, yeah, he possibly was going away, which is fine. Um, a holiday won't hurt him either. Uh, so yeah, so no, um, bit of stock work. Um, get the jewels back on the big tractor. And yeah, look, there's plenty of other bits and pieces that we've been sort of dodging. Um, well, it's been the festive season, but yeah, we're sort of starting to get back into it now. <laughs> Uh, right, so today we're collecting our tissue sample. Um, last week we checked out the seafood rich PI, um, which it had. Um, so now we're just taking our sample to send off so that we can get our nitrogen use efficiency back and then base our top dressing decision off that um, within the next 14 days. Um, so basically John's on 10 inch row spacings here, so based on our conversion chart um, and in a drill sown crop, um, we've got to take a sample on a 79 centimetre row. Um, and that varies based on your row spacing um, and how you've sewn it, so aerial is a different story altogether. Um, so basically I'll just put this in here. Um, you cut basically at ground level the whole plant, so unlike your cereals or your canola where you're taking you know, your inuous leaf or whatever, you're taking a whole top essentially in your rice crop um, and go right along and then yeah, we just going to bag them up, set the samples and go from there. And take it back and see if we can set the microwave on fire. <laughs> That's the next thing. So what we've done, uh, Miranda's got the, the satellite NDVI image, so we've basically just picked six spots off that image that she's got. We actually haven't got the, the data back from Alex with the drone yet, um, which he's probably, he would have it, but um, he was under the pump a bit the other day, so I haven't heard from him. So, uh, yeah, so she's just got the one off the... What do you use, data farming or...? Yeah, I've used data farming for this one, um, just because it's got a nice little key that shows me my range. Yep. Um, Agworld and data farming both got an image on the 31st, yep. so we've got a very recent photo, which is good. We were initially working with one from the 21st yeah, last yeah. week. Yeah, um, the data farm, yours is a lot clearer than the Agworld one yeah, that I've got. a lot clearer, so, which is nice. Um, it's just important, especially this season, where we've got a lot of variability in our fields um, due to a myriad of reasons. So yep. it's just good to, to base it off that. Um, and yeah, as we said before, John, it's it's hard to see with the naked eye where the difference is, but right here we're standing in probably a more lush part of the crop. Yeah, despite yeah. Despite it looking very similar. Similar, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, now, depending on the length of your, or the width of your sewing, sometimes you'll take it on either side of the rod. Ah, uh, okay, you've yeah. got a 79 centimetre one. So, seven inch spacing, you essentially take both sides yeah, of exactly the stick. Right. Yeah, exactly yeah. right, yeah. So, you're just trying to get that equivalent of 0 0.2 of a square metre, um, which is what that rice ring is. Ah, yeah, and then it works, works yeah. back to perfect. Yeah. Works back. So, um, there's our first sample, and we'll, yeah, jump into another spot. Another sample number three, got the good old coal shopping bags for the uh, samples. Had an abundance at home, so we're like perfect. You haven't gone to the paper ones yet. <laughs> yes, we have a bunch of those. After uh, next year, we'll be budget yeah. for, for rice uh, sampling. I'll just buy something else. Thank you. So, yeah, basically, hope to have these results back tomorrow. Yeah. Um, that's sort of the plan. Um, I want to I'll ring, ring Jonesy with the plane and just book him in. tell him maybe Thursday or Friday, Friday probably. Lovely. Cool. So that's it for this area. We'll go to a different spot and take a couple more. Sit that on there to try and, try and get it to dry a bit better. Yeah. So we've weighed each individual sample and then what have you done Randy? You've just taken a handful out of each each of the six samples that we've taken so we've got a bit left over here and then we've chopped it chopped it up into the ice cream dish and now we're trying to blow the microwave up. <laughs> so, just, so just use the microwave to dry it down. Um, and then we end up with a 
Is that other one that oh yeah it's rolled up here just end up with a little sample like that and then they that's what they use to sample looks like a bag full of lawn clippings essentially ah uh, yeah to determine how much urea we need so the irrigation on the corn's all finished up uh, I've just closed the out last outlet here and uh, yeah we'll run it round and the dam is pretty full there's still is water running off the corn uh, we've got the pump going pretty well down there just topped it up with fuel but yeah I'll just run this round now into the into the rice so um, yeah, and try and try and one get a bit of the water gone, pumped away from down the bottom here because there is quite a bit there. But two, we can start and um, yeah, we're just starting to put water back on the rice since well, we haven't had rice water running on it since Christmas Day, so that's that's a week ago. So that was just with that 80 mil of rain, so it's bought us for a fair bit of time, which is good. Um, don't know, doesn't look like it's going to rain yet, but um, it is still pretty humid today, so we'll just yeah. Suck it and see what happens. Come down and fill the pump up again. We are starting to, starting to make a bit of headway with the water. Um, but yeah, a bit of a nasty one coming. It's sort of been building all day and it's been humid. It's been sticky and sticky. Um, but just looking on the radar, sort of been going around. A bit of lightning and thunder earlier on. Sort of one went around the north and then one went around sort of south of the river. And yeah, just looking at the radar, we're sort of in line for this one, so we'll see how we go. It's sort of yellow and all sorts of funny colours on the radar, but wind's red in the northeast here, so I think we're, we'll get something. So anyway, it won't be disastrous, as long as it doesn't have any hail, it doesn't really want to hail now. Um, but yeah, a bit of 10 or 15 mil on, on here won't hurt, it'll just create more water, but the way, uh, yeah, the, way the storms have been, um, you know, lots of summer, uh, lots of luck. Likes a Christmas day if I can get it out. Uh, yeah, it's sort of 40 mil in an hour and a half. We don't particularly want that. So, anyway, there we go. Is we've got the, we're pumping the water in too, so I just, um, that was starting to get a bit full, so I thought I'd just let a bit go, um, come down a bit. Just see the corn. It's getting a bit of size about it now, like you can see. Um, the fence is a bit of comparison so it's um, yeah good two or three foot or better higher than the fence um, when you get away from the edge a bit so again plenty of tassels starting to turn up so yeah that's no, looking looking good so it'll be interesting hopefully we get the, the tissues test back tomorrow and we'll get a bit of an idea of what the nitrogen needs on uh, for this stuff it has definitely changed color the last fortnight like it's starting to lighten off as though it is looking for a bit of nitrogen so um, yeah it'll be interesting to see what it looks like okay a bit of a recap on where we got to today so we've got the jewels back on the big tractor uh, we've got the boom spray on the magnum and transferred a bit of the GPS gear back in it so we can we're ready to go spraying uh, I've got the you can see the little yellow box there I've got the laser uh, box in the tractor so We've got a bit of ground over at the dairy farm that we're gonna, I wanna sort of do a regrade on. A bit like what we did with the, the rice. So uh, weather permitting, see how dry, what the weather does as to whether we can get at that in the next, oh, next week or something like that. But they are talking more rain at the weekend, so it's crazy. Uh, so head of maintenance, uh, Tony stripped uh, the rotor bars off the, oh, you might be able to see that all right. So what we do in rice, we've got, what I've spoke about before, we've got the, the spiked bars, which you can see there. Uh, see, he's got a little bit of a, where my finger is, he's got a bit of a, uh, um, so they're actually a rice bar, so we run them in the cereals to help with separation. What we do is we run them, the whole uh, rotor with those bars in them. I do actually have one here I can show you a bit closer. Uh, so, that's him there, as opposed to, what's he done with the other ones? Hang on, as opposed to these guys here, so just compare. So the two there, you can sort of, you can see the two, see how it's got the, the hook on it there, so that just helps, helps with separation, separating the grain from the straw and 
because we're harvesting, as I've said before, we're harvesting the rice at such high moisture, you know, around that 20% as opposed to, you know, the cereals at 10%. I don't know why this camera won't focus. It's a bit better in the eye. That's better. So yeah, you can see those, they're just held on with a single bolt. So he's just, uh, yeah, just stripped the, the front half off. There's 38 in the front half. So we've got to get 38 um, more spiked ones. Um, I think they're about 70 bucks each. So they're not uh, cheap when you've got a few of them to do. Uh, these are the, con the other concaves. If you've wondered um, that we run in the number one position, um, the farmers amongst us that are watching. Uh, so they're another one, they're designed by Rod, so we run them in everything now. Uh, great with thrashing, fantastic in canola, with has really tidied the sample up in canola. Um, so yeah, they're the, they're the front ones that we run, and then you can see just the, we can see the difference um, in the second position, the second uh, concave that we run there. So. Uh, we run a completely different, we run, run what they call a round bar concave for corn and rice, um, which we do have to make. So uh, we could buy them, but we'll uh, yeah, watch this space, we've got a bit of a plan there. So we're just doing the wheel bearings on, on, the, on the back wheels too. Um, you may, or most of you would have seen, we had the, the dust cap pop off towards the end of harvest, so we just decided um, that we do the wheel bearings uh, regardless once we got it back in the shed. They have been done before because it had two different brands of bearings in it. So they're just a, a tapered roller bearing with an inner and outer. So um, Tony's got to we'll clean that up um, in the morning. Hopefully he was going to get new bearings and seals for both. So we'll do both sides and then we sort of know it's right. Um, spoke to the local case dealer. They do have the rotor bars in stock, um, but we just need to, there's another, it's nothing major. You can't, oh yeah, you can. There's a flap of canvas along the front here that's a bit ratty, so and you can see just how much dirt and crap there is still in the machines after you clean them out. So we're gonna put a new bit of canvas along the front there. Um, and also, and talk about expensive, Jesus. Um, the floor in this feeder house is starting to wear out, so that's the that's the bottom bit where the grain sits. Now, to put a new genuine floor in that was nearly ten thousand dollars. It's in three sections, um, yeah, and I think eighteen hundred for the back section, three thousand for the middle, and four thousand for the front. So that's just off its head. It's ridiculous. So do is once we get it operational um, we'll have a look whether we pull the feed house chains in and whether I, I make up a, a stainless floor or something for it there is a guy that makes actually does make a lot of stainless steel parts for this stuff so I might even give him a ring and um, see whether he's got a replacement floor for them um, I'll be very surprised if he doesn't um, but yeah just we had a well, it was the legacy of the PDO shaft going through last harvest. It had actually punched a hole in the floor. And when I come to, uh, before harvest is gone, um, I got to and just wanted to patch the floor up. It's just starting to rain. Um, yeah, welded up and yeah, the, it was paper thin, so, or tissue thin even. Um, it did take a bit of welding up, so. Uh, anyway, hopefully I've got everything, um, right with the rice um, with taking that sample. Um, if I don't, I'll, um, I'll talk about it a bit on the next video once we get the, the um, results back and how, how it's sort of shaped up and what we've got to do. But yeah, I had actually probably missed a bit of the critical bit when Miranda was cutting the samples up and chucking them in the microwave. I had to go into the house and, and find a number for the form that we send away. And um, yeah, the guys were there and I just, yeah, I sort of got sidetracked a bit. So it was a, a bit rushed at the end there, but um, basically, yeah, those the six different samples she took. Um, yeah, she took, I think, what you say about, I think each sample was near enough to 500 grams um, from memory. And she took about 35 grams out of each sample and then cut them up a bit like lawn clippings, put them in the microwave to dry them, and then um, sent them away. So hopefully tomorrow, uh, I was told she sent me a flick of me message earlier on. Um, she thinks she made the cutoff time to get the the samples in today's lot so 
I'm hoping, um, yeah, tomorrow we'll get an email or a text message and we'll get a bit of an idea of what's going on. So, anyway, uh, that's pretty interesting, that sort of stuff. I'm still learning sort of that sort of thing as well. So, um, it was it was good to have a yak to Miranda about it and what actually goes on. Um, really good of her to come on the camera. I'm going to try and do a bit more of that now that I suppose I'm a bit more confident with the camera and I'm um, happy to ask people now. So, hopefully I can get... Um, Peter who's been giving Miranda a hand with the summer crop and then we'll get Matt that does our main season stuff we'll get him, we'll get him we'll corner him one day too and and get him to, to talk as well so but yeah hopefully going forward we can get a few more of these guys that are professionals that we use um, to sort of help us run our business so uh, anyway thanks again for watching hope you got something out of it we'll see you on the next one ta -da.